right bit. Hey, how's, it, how's it feel to put the pads back on for the first time in a year? I'm going to feel good. It feel a little weird, but, um, you know, a little tired just trying to get back used to it. But it felt good being back out there finally. What about it felt weird? I ain't put pads on in the years. It's, it's a different feeling. You know, you got to get, you know, a little extra weight on you, you know. Got to get back in a little bit of more shape. So that's about it, though. Did you know, know where's did you your, know this was, did you, you know this where's was your, like, did you know today would be the day or did you think maybe it might be another week? Um, They they warned me about it last week, you know, to see how it was going to go and how I was feeling. I was like, yeah, I'm all for it. Let's do it. Where do you think your speed's at right now? As long as I'm running 21 to 23 miles an hour, I don't care. <laughs> as long that, as it's in that range, I don't care. Are you, is that where you are? Yeah. Is that fast on the team? Oh, yeah. I, I, even with the knee brace, I never say I'm not. Faster than Montrell? Yeah. I don't know. Me and Trell got a race. What's your fastest 100? What's your, his is 10 7. What's your fastest 100? 10 3, 10 4. Awesome. That was like junior year of high school. Yeah, that's when his was. All right, this sounds silly, but will you actually race Montrell at some point? Yeah, my, tra my trailer competitor will do it just on the fun type, you know, fun tip, you know what I'm saying? But, okay. You know, Montrell, my boy, you know, he, he learned it from me. Um, I kind of take him under my wing because, you know, rookies, we was, we was coming in thinking too much and, you know, worried about the plays and stuff. So he's gotten way better just asking me questions, you know, being a sponge and just absorbing stuff. So um, I kind of been his bigger brother in this, this whole are, process. Where are you playing a game, tackling, people tackling you? How far away are you from that? Um, I think soon. Um, I don't know what preseason, I don't know what those plans are yet. So just got to talk to the trainers and, Talk to Mr. P about you know all of that stuff and where he wants to where he wants me to play and you know but I think I'm ready I think I'm fine. Seattle yeah. game Seattle. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Just no. Yeah. <laughs> um, meaning you know being away from ball. Um, like I said, it's um, it's been a tough journey to be honest. You know um, you know I was just it was just so much stuff I was dealing with being piled up you know, on top of each other, on top of each other. You know, at one point, um, you know, just dealing with the ACL um, and, and a little bit of more things, you know, family situations, you know, my you know my, first, my my love of my life passed, you know, my grandmother. So that was the toughest thing. And, you know, the devil was on my back for a while. And, um, you know, I wish I would have never did it by myself. You know, I wish I would have asked for help because, you know, at some point, it was at one point in my life, and I'm just be honest with y'all because I'm more vulnerable and, you know, more confident in myself about saying it. But, um. At one point, I didn't want to be here. Like, I didn't want to be in this world. You know, I, it was one point I just didn't want to be on earth no more, you know, because I lost my, my granny, and that really hurt me. Um, so just, just you know, God gave me the strength just to get out that hole, and, you know, he knew I was strong enough to get through. I didn't feel like I was at the time, and, you know, just getting out that hole was just it's very hard and very tough, you know what I'm saying? Just having all these things going on and, you know, piling on top of each other, it was a hard process, but... You know, just to see where I'm at from where I started and where I'm at now, you know, a big change. And I'm proud of myself, and I know my grandmother proud. Pretty powerful stuff with grandma. Was the party during that process? Things were so down to my grandmother wouldn't want me to give up like this. She would want me to get back. Yeah, and, I, and that, I think that's the reason, you know, I'm still here. You know, like, I had to think about that. I had to think about all the people I let down. And, um, you know, my mom, my dad, my family, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, but it it was just that was the lowest point of my life, hands down, lowest point of my life. And you know, to see me dig out of it, you know, and then but start becoming vulnerable with people I trust and start opening up more, you know, because we just so used to bottling stuff up and um and just like taking it to the chin a lot, you know. I'm, you know, so I'm just learning each day and day day and out. And you know, I'm glad that I'm still here and I'm still you know with the team, you know, got my family around and you know just being out on the field has just been a big help. Obviously, when, physically, you're doing a lot better getting on the field today, but mentally, where are you at right now with dealing with all, everything? Mentally, I'm a lot better. You know, um, I'm a lot happier. You know, it was at one point I was in a depressed state. Um, and uh, like I said, just climbing out that hole. You know what I mean? So, you know, I've just been fighting my way out of there, you know, asking for help, being vulnerable, and um, trying to do what's best. When how much, exactly more, does a, was how, how much more does point? a day like today where you're able to put on pads – and have gotten past that, like really have a light at the end of the tunnel. How much more does that mean to you? I mean a lot. You know, just being around the guys, you know, I think the one thing that was kind of, you know, the down part about being away from football, you know, you can't travel with the team. You can't be around the guys. Like, you know, I was in the house most of the time or, you know, away from the guys, you know, and you kind of feel like you're not a part of the team anymore. 
And, um, you know, but the group I'm in, the receiver group I'm in, you know, guys checked on me, called them, called me all the time and checked up on me. So, you know, I wasn't able to be present or physically there. But, you know, they always called me and checked up on me, and I appreciate them. When exactly was the lowest point, KJ? Um, that, that night I got that call. So I, y'all, don't, y'all don't understand, like, that's my, that was my mother. You know what I mean? Like, Your I took grandmother? Her to, yeah, my grandmother was my mother. So, like, I took her to get her hair done, you know, took her to get food all the time. Like, every time I came home, I seen her first. You know what I mean? I called her every Monday. And so when I missed that call on that Monday, and then we got the call on Saturday. So, you know what I mean? Like, I, it's, it's a lot of regret in my heart from that. When was that? Um, it was like three months after surgery. Like three months after surgery. So, but it, it, I, had, I was holding a lot of regret on myself about that. And, you know, it, it still kind of haunts me to this day, even though I'm better. But, you know, when you, when you, you lose the woman that raised you, it's, just, it's a different feeling. Man, I, ain't, I didn't, you know, at first, I didn't talk to nobody. I didn't talk to nobody. Um, I was in this little cocoon, wrapped up, and just, you know, kept everything to myself. You know, I feel like, as a man, we always taught to, you know, be tough or, you know, just, you know what I mean, just block everything out. You got to be a man, you got to be tough, but that's just not the prime example of a, a masculine man. Like, you just got to, sometimes you got to let it out. Sometimes you need help, and I'm just starting to learn that now. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, I got talking, you know, talking more. Like I said, I was in therapy. I checked in, into therapy, you know, talking to my guys more, talking to my mom, my dad, all my, all my people that care about me out here. You know, I don't got no family out here. So um, just trying my best just to be a better version of myself. Man, ther- ther- therapy is ups and downs. It's for sure ups and downs. You know, um, you know, some days you want you hear what you want to hear, and then some days it's not the stuff you want to hear. That's just, but that's life. Life ain't perfect. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm human. You know what I mean? I'm not afraid to tell y'all what I've been going through. It's been a tough year. You know what I mean? But, you know, y'all see me where I'm at right now. Y'all see that I'm still here, and, you know, I'm still working to be the best version of myself. So, um, you know, I know everybody around here is proud of me. You know, I'm proud of myself for where I came from, step one to, to right now. So just keep pushing from there. KJ, the why do you feel like you, you wanted to share your story? Obviously, this is personal stuff. You know, I, <laughs> I, like I said, I'm getting better at just letting stuff out and being vulnerable. Um, you know, I think it's a lot of people out there that's in my situation or has been through stuff like that. It just, you know, you, you keep stuff held in, you just bottle it up, and it just it just keep piling on, piling on until you explode, man. So, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid no more to just, you know, let it be known that I was going through these things. Um, like I said, we all human. We all going to have them up days, them down days, like, you know, it – you know, I know y'all know I'm a goofy person. I come out here and laugh and smile, you know, but it was one day on the field where I, you know, I had to just go to the side and cry. And that's just, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to tear up up here. <laughs> but um, um, that's just life, though, you know? So me being vulnerable, you know, one thing Tim Grover told me was, like, you being grown, uh, vulnerable, you know, gains trust. And, you know, so just me trying to open up and be a better person and just do everything and just be positive. You know, because the mind is strong, man, very strong. So I try to speak everything into existence. Is it therapeutic, the next for, you to step to hmm? is it therapeutic for you to talk about it? Yeah, it is. You know, I'm, I'm more comfortable. You know, I'm not afraid to, to talk about it anymore like I used to. With Tim Grover out there, I don't know if you guys knew he'd be there with Russ. How crazy was that to be able to talk to a guy who's worked with Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and guys like that? Um, at first, I didn't know who he was until they told me, and then I watched – and I remember them from uh, the last dance. What? <laughs> Man, you goofy. I'm sorry. That was Tim Pat. That's my big brother. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, it was you know, just talking to him, just learning and gaining so much knowledge from him. You know, he's a great source, great resource to have around. You know what I mean? So, blessing I even got to meet the dude. You know what I mean? So he's a great guy. I appreciate him. Um, I, I know y'all probably seen him out here a couple times. You know, just talking to him, picking his brain and. You know, he, he tells you the truth, the harsh truth. It could be harsh sometimes, um, but it's, it's things you need to hear and you need to learn from. Is there a different appreciation for what football means to you now and the brotherhood of being on a team? Yeah, you know, um, like I said, like most of my most of everybody, especially on the team, like I tell them I love them every day. You know, just you, you, you'll never know when your last day is. And, you know, I started to appreciate that more as I got older. You know, I feel like when we're younger and we're kids, we don't realize – you know, you know how much your dad or your mom wants you to say, or just call up on them and check up on them and just say like, "Hey, I, I love you, I miss you." That's all I want to say. You know what I mean? That means a lot. 
So, you know, I take every day, every step. You know, I'm blessed, you know, just because I can get out of bed and walk on two feet. You know what I mean? Some people can't do that. You know what I mean? So I'm just very blessed right now. Um, that I'm even out here in front of y'all, talking to y'all, and just being out here just to play ball. You know, so football brought me, brought me back to life. And I, I'm grateful. You talked about climbing out of the hole. Do you, was there a first step? Was there a moment, or was it more gradual than that when you made a conscious decision of, like, okay, I'm going to work my way back? Um, you know, it was always, you know, when I was around football, it was always, you know, come in positive, you know, always think positive thoughts and um, do whatever you can just to get back where you were or, or be a better version of yourself, you know. So, you know, and you can ask anybody, you know, I was always in the training room. I've come, I, come, I come in with a smile, you know, from my rookie year to now, I used to come in, you know, uh, like all, you know, groggy and didn't want to do it and stuff like that. And now, you know, I just realize and I'm mature, I'm more mature and i just grown from that and, you know, just trying to be better. You know, I come here with a smile on my face every day. You know, if, if, even if I'm going through something, even if I'm not, you know, I come in here blessed because I'm living something that I wrote down when I was four years old, a dream, you know, in a book. So I'm living that. So I'm very blessed. Do you anticipate going out of your way when guys throughout the year over the next couple of years get hurt to make sure to be the guy checking on them and, and talking to them about mental, the mental side of it? Beyond for the sure. Business? For sure. Because I feel like you need somebody at that time. Like you don't need to always be alone. You don't need to always isolate yourself. You know, so, um, you know, I kind of learned the hard way because that's what, I've always done, I've always got through things by myself. And um, wish I wouldn't have, wish I wouldn't have, but you know, God gave me the strength just to reach out and start branching out and just reaching out to people and just, just to help, you know, like it's not, it's okay to ask for help sometimes. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I'll for sure be that person, you know, not gonna will, we not, nobody getting hurt this year, but not gonna will, so we ain't gonna speak that into existence. What would you have done differently if, if like what you got hurt, just knowing how that hurt? What I would have done differently? I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess, just not try to be the this Mr. Tough guy and get through it on your by your, by yourself, you know. Like, I, like I was just telling him, you know, it's it's okay to ask for help, you know. And I'm, I had to gradually learn that, slowly learn it, and it was, it was hard for me because I'm just so used to one thing and so used to doing something, you know, so used to being by myself and getting out the hole by myself, you know. So just learning that and speaking to people and getting other people's opinions. You know, even being around Russ and, and Miss C, like, it was one time I just talked to Miss C about life for like two hours. You know what I mean? Like, we talking about pop star, you know what I mean? So, and it was just, and just Russ just being here and just being so confident and just being a competitor he is, you know, just having tough conversations with him. Like, you know, they've really been a big help and they don't even know. You know what I mean? Just talking to me and just hearing them and just hearing their stories and things like that. So just being around them has just brought me up as well.